Do we have another question from the audience? I think I saw a hand at the back. Thank you, the microphone's just coming. Yep. Roger Williams from Citrix. Question is more around app. We've talked a lot about heavy content, but from an enterprise standpoint, a lot of what they're interested in is delivery of applications. What do you guys see as the change in the balance of equilibrium between the cloud and the device in terms of how does 5G affect that? Can I just be a disruptive and just annoy all my uh, operator friends here? I just want to say that I see a danger there. I'll give you an example. In the Winter Olympics, we have the KT who delivers. Right next to them is Alibaba, another worldwide uh, Olympic sponsor. They actually, we talk about edge compute, and they grab onto that very, very quickly. They realize, I have the cloud. I'm going to move some of that to the edge. We gave them an SDK. Within four months, they have stood up this uh, analytics running on the edge. They call it edge cloud, which is based on the concept of uh, edge computing, uh, multiple access edge computing. And they started mapping out the heat map of an entire uh, Winter Olympics park. And they start predicting, uh, I think they start with uh, 30 minutes and then one hour where the traffic's are heading to. So there's implications, right? Because they do facial recognition, all that. The implication is phenomenal in terms of retail, in terms of smart city, security, crowd control, and all that. When I looked at that, I said, well, I'm happy because they're using my technology. But yet, at the same time, they move lightning speed compared to the typical telco that we serve. So if you're not careful, yeah. They, they could take over. They can push the easy button and just hit it. That's a, that's a danger for, for all of us. Anyone else want to, want to come in on, on, on the question here? Yeah, so Robert? I think it's a fantastic question. The prior one was as well. I think um, I go back to still solving business problems. What, are, you know, what is the issue we're trying to solve? There's a lot of uh, interesting uh, use cases where you are pushing that compute closer and closer. So in your mobile infrastructure, getting that application super close to the customer. And a lot of customers that we're talking to want to manage their data locally for privacy concerns. They don't want it, even from the latency advantage they're getting if it's local, but they don't want it necessarily hopping out for privacy and security issues. So I do think the comment that was made uh, prior is a good one. Sometimes you got to send it back. Sometimes it's locally being crunched. but um, I think, uh, I think all in all, there are some really interesting use cases back to this topic about monetization um, that we can drive. And to your earlier question, I think there's a lot of advertising uh, angst in the market too from some of our new competitors, right, that are out there, like an Alibaba as an example. So as an operator, we're excited about the new frontier of blending content and advertising monetization of assets that we, um, frankly, haven't all had together in one spot before. I mean, I have a slightly opposite view in a sense, which is I think one of the, you know, the explosion of data and the need for low latency, I'm glad I've got buildings close to customers. <laughs> you know? Right. Because I think that's a, you know, a real a, an asset going forward. Well, and you already have the relationship with the customer, and that's a very, that's the stickiest of all, mm -hmm. right? Any more questions from our audience? Oh, there's one at the, the far back there, I think. Just at the far back by the, behind the camera there. Uh, so this one's kind of more of a business-oriented question, a use case question. So there's been a couple of controversial statements. If you remember back when 4G's first coming out, hey, it's going to take a killer app to consume it. But then, of course, people just transferred what they were doing on wireline to wireless, and the initial wave of capacity is consumed almost immediately. And then we've had recent controversial statements about just how long it took to get a payback on the investment. So if you were to place a bet, when do you think you'll exhaust the first wave of capacity in 5G? And when do you think you'll eventually get the payback on your 5G investment monetarily? Tough questions. Who's going to be brave enough to go to tackle that one first? 
<laughs> Capacity. <laughs> I was being nominated. I think, I think the... I mean, it is a great question. And um, I think, for me, the, pay, the, the payback that comes quite quickly is reducing the cost per bit delivered to a customer device and the promise of the technology to do that. And that, that does mean that I can, you know, already see um, not too far away, and I'm not going to tell you a year, not too far away when the break-even point is, from a, just from a pure cost point of view, supporting the existing revenue. So, um, yeah, and, and it's not that far away. So, um, I, see, I see that. It's, it's the rest of the uh, technology that we have to build around the network to bring to life some of these more unique services, where I think we're looking at what's the need there, and how long will the payback for that be? How do you think uh, that's a good question? And I know we're, as teams, all trying to solve those business case financials. Um, it's really hard to uh, return a good profitability on the current fixed wireless LTE case. The economics aren't really there. So, What's uh, interesting and appealing this go around on 5G is the capacity and the cost per bit um, is way different. And so now I think you're going to see carriers around the globe really taking on this fixed wireless use case and um, pushing extremely hard on it. I think we have time for one more. If you can squeeze in one more question before our allotted time is up, that would be, uh, would be great. There's a hand near the front earlier. Here we go. Second row. Evening panel. Um, Richard Baker from Geospock in Cambridge, UK also. Um, smart cities haven't been mentioned this evening. Uh, we see them a lot around the conference. But we're facing a new era of multi-mode communication networks as we get into smart city architectures. What are your strategies as we think about hybrid, fixed, and mobile 5G networks, but ultimately the prioritization, the quality of service, the class of service for these new telemetry networks need to be bedded in standards for one, but ultimately are, you're going to be the custodian of safety. H how do you face into that responsibility? That's again to the carrier, customer, the carrier providers here. You go first this time. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll skip the one. No. <laughs> Let me, let, I mean, just as you know, we've, we've been doing smart cities, a smart city in Milton Keynes for some time. And, um, you know, I think we've learned a lot through that. And I think the, the standards piece, i.e. the ability to um, have very low power consuming devices uh, that can stream the data, I think that problem is pretty much solved now. I mean, we've got to manufacture the devices at scale. Um, we see the value in the data and the data hub and how you curate and then um, utilize that data across multiple applications. Um, the problem at the moment, I think, is you know, his, who owns the data um, and therefore who can onward monetize it and how does the, bid, the business model emerge from that. And, and I think for it to really work well, we do need a you know, multiple industries in a city collaborating and agreeing to share and pay for that data um, as, a way of, as a way of making that model actually work. Thank you, Hamid. Um, look, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap things um, up rather, rather quickly, but um, be before we, we do, could I just ask our panelists for a, a, a final word? You know, what we all must be focused on what, what, what do we as an industry need to be focused on to ensure that we realize the maximum potential of 5G you know, in the shortest time possible? And Francisco, maybe I can start with you and we'll, we'll come around the panel. Just a, a brief summary of, of our advice to the industry. Well, I, I think, I mean, uh, as was said before, we don't even know the, where the, that break-even break even point is. So, but still, I mean, it's a, it's a journey that we need to, to take. I mean, taking into account the cost per, per bit is something that we can't afford not doing eventually, right? Besides that, I mean, there's a big opportunity to, to transform ourselves and, and the way that we, that we do the, the, and we deliver the services. Right now, we've been talking about the big cases, 
But what about all that uh, long tail? We need to be ready for that long tail as well. And that's uh, precisely what uh, it, you, you can't do that overnight. You need uh, a, a lot of preparation and a lot of transformation in order to get the most from, from that. I think that we, if we manage uh, to do that and start working now on, on that transformation, besides the evolutionary path on the radio uh, strategy and the, and the cost per bit, uh, we will have um, way more opportunities in, in that space. Caroline. Enterprise digital transformation. Uh, if you would Google uh, a blog just pulled out last night by uh, Honeywell, uh, talking about uh, some of the proof of concept that we've been working with them in Silicon Valley around modernizing, modernizing warehouse. I mean, warehouse has been around for a long time, but they clear, based on the work that we've done together, they saw opportunity using 5G to uplift their uh, warehouse business, which they house for many uh, manufacturing and uh, enterprises. And in China, the government is uh, putting a mandate by 2025, lifting their uh, state-owned uh, 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 enterprises into the, the modern age. And there is a lot of money that being made. That's why all the cloud guys in China are so excited about 5G. And I think these are probably good opportunity for us all to be willing to, uh, uh, to experiment and learn and fail fast. And Howard? Um, I, mean, I, would, I mean, for me, um, I think by the time we've achieved ubiquity on 4G, we'd have been doing it for eight years. And, and I'm not sure that 5G will necessarily if you look at trying to get to you know, near 100% geographic coverage, go any quicker. In fact, it might take longer because of the densification needed and you know, millimeter wave, et cetera. So, so I think, yet I think that the most exciting revenue streams are from enterprises. And so for me, it's how do we stimulate enterprise use cases that do not rely on ubiquitous coverage uh, as a way of generating immediate returns? Right. And Roy? Well, I'm going to go back to something I said earlier. I really think it's going to be about collaboration. And, and the question around smart cities is an excellent one. Um, when I said machine to machine has been around for a long time, I was referring to smart cities in that as well. But if I look at the examples where we've gone in and worked with some really large cities, to, uh, large uh, conglomerates to do smart city work, you know, they'll start out with one assumption, and they're going to say, you know, we're going to modify our existing network to overlay a smart city plan. And then they come back, and if you do enough work with them iteratively, they come back, in some cases, they're going to, we're just going to run a parallel network. It goes back to your point. What, where are the places that they can optimize, even though they don't have 100% ubiquitous coverage? Um, and I've just found that we've gotten not only better results, but much faster results when we do an iterative, agile approach to working in, in incorporating this new technology in different opportunities as opposed to like standing back and just throwing sheets of paper at each other. So, so I think it's really gonna be about collaboration. And Robert. Yeah, I think our message is that 5G is real this year. Uh, we announced we'll be in 12 uh, major markets in the United States by the end of this year with a mobile service. So it's not all hype cycle. Right? It's happening. And I think with that becomes a little bit of patience. So what is it that we're trying to innovate on and what solutions are we trying to solve um, is, is kind of a two-pronged message. It's happening, but we also need some assistance, need some patience to go build out these applications and prove in that there's returns for our customers and therefore it'll be returns for us. Thank you very much. I mean that's all we've got time for tonight, unfortunately. But I'd just like to thank you all for attending our super panel tonight and all of those who are watching online. Quick plug, you can watch all our MWC coverage at telecomtv.com, as usual, of course. Um, but please now join me in thanking all of our panelists and industry guests for their contribution this evening. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.